Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the JavaFX series. This episode I'll be teaching you about the HBox and the VBox. So the HBox and the VBox are both what's called a layout pane, which allows you to lay out your nodes in a specific order. So basically you can choose where you want your nodes and your GUI to be laid out, right? So I like to call them layout managers, but you can also call them layout panes. That's more specific, that's what it's really called. Because if you go here to the HBox class within the documentation, you can see that the HBox is basically a child of the class pane, and then that is a child of the class region, and that is a child of the class parent, and that is a child of the class node. So it's a really big hierarchy here, and they all inherit you know, some methods from each other and stuff like that. But the most important one here is the pane class, which allows you to control the layout of different nodes, right? That's what we're gonna do with the various subclasses of that class of pane. And the first one that we're going to go over is the HBox and the VBox, so first two of them. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that hierarchy there, you know, the different classes that form eventually the HBox and the VBox, and the other different layout panes that we're going to be going over in the future episodes. So these are going to be very simple, these first two that I'm about to show you. So the first thing I want to do is create our HBox, which is going to represent the root node of our application like we always do usually. I always use HBox or VBox, doesn't really matter, but you know now it matters obviously because we're, we're going to be working with it. So yeah, let's create an HBox here. So HBox, capital B by the way, and that's going to be called root because it's going to represent the root node of course, and that's going to be, and then we need to declare a new um, object of that of course, so HBox just like that. And we can provide some parameters if we want to, and but we're not going to go over that right now, we're going to do that later. So the first thing we can do, you know, the main primary thing that we can do with this HBox layout pane um, is add child nodes to it, right? So we can add some stuff to it to actually be laid out because this HBox here is actually going to be the thing that lays out, you know, each node, child node inside of it. So let's just go ahead and create some child nodes for it. So we're going to do button and we're going to call this button uh, B1 is equal to new button. Okay, and let's give the button a name here. And we're going to say it's called one. And then we're just going to make four more buttons or three more buttons to create four total buttons. Okay. And we're going to add all of these buttons to our HBox so we can see how the HBox lays out its child nodes, right? Because each um, layout pane that we're going to be going over is going to lay out each of its child nodes in a different way, okay? And uh, so the HBox is going to lay out its nodes in a horizontal manner. That's why it's called HBox for horizontal. So that means that it lays it out from left to right. It's not going to go vertically, it's going to go horizontally, okay? So sideways, I guess you could call it. And so yeah, let's add all these buttons here to the HBox. So B2, B3, and then B4, okay? Uh, and, oh, I put it in the wrong place. That makes sense why I was doing that. There we go. So there it should be added now. So we can go ahead and start running this and see what it looks like. And if we did it correctly, it should lay out B1 through B4 from left to right. And that's exactly what it did. You can see one, two, three, and four. So that's a very simple, right? It's just a simple H box that lays out its child nodes from left to right. It's horizontal, right? That's why it's going this way. But if I was to create a V box, it would be going this way. One, two, three, four. And I'll show you that in a second, don't worry. So anyway, it's very simple, of course, and it doesn't matter. It could be a hyperlink that you put here. It can be any of the JavaFX controls that you can put inside of here as a child node. It's gonna be laid out the same way from left to right horizontally, okay? That's how it's gonna work. Um, so let's go ahead and look at some other stuff that we can do with the uh, with the HBox, right? So there's different methods that you can use with HBox. So if we do root dot, and then we can look at all these different methods here, right? Very very confusing because you know it's a lot to get acquainted with when you first start. But there's some main ones that I want you to get acquainted with, and the first one is going to be set spacing, which is going to allow you to set the amount of width between each child node of the HBox, okay? So we can set the amount of space between the B1, B2, B3, and B4, all of them, okay? So let's just uh, put a number in here, for example, it wants a double V, so um, just a random number, we'll do like 20. So this should put about 20, I guess, pixels, I don't know if it's pixels or not, but 20 of whatever unit between each node. So let's run this and see what happens. And so there we go, now we can see that each of these nodes has a, a width of about 20 between each of them, right? That's pretty cool, right? So now we can set the spacing between each of the child nodes. And again, it doesn't have to be a button, it can be any type of node that we can put in here as a control. Pretty cool, right? So let's look at some other stuff. So we can set the spacing. Let's actually play around with this some more. Let's see what 50 looks like, okay? And 50 is pretty cool, pretty big, right? That's awesome. And so let's look at some other stuff, like I said. So we're gonna do, um, so we can set the alignment of our um, HBox, so root dot set alignment, and then we need to provide, if you do control P to see the parameters, we need to provide a pos, a, a POS object, right? And that stands for position, obviously. 
And so if we want to put a position in here, we can simply do POS dot, and then we have all these different positions that we have here, right? And these are part of the JavaFX geometry um, class, right? Or package, excuse me. So we have all these different ones. You have top left, top center, center right. And these are basically where the HBox is going to be located, where it's going to try and locate all of the child nodes for the HBox, okay? So just to see an example of what this might look like, we can try doing baseline center. Let's see what that looks like. So let's run this. So it's basically going to choose where it's going to put everything. And that's going to make sure that everything is in the center. Okay, let's change this back to like 10, right? So we can see it more clearly. There we go. That's better. So now we can see everything's clearly in the center, right? So baseline center. So if we were to expand this, we can see that it's still in the center, right? So no matter where or no matter how big the window is, it's still going to try and align this H box into the center. Pretty cool, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then if we were to expand this upward, it'd still be at the very top. So let's play around some with some other ones. We could try um, top center. No, we already did top center, I think. So top right, we could do that. We could do bottom right. Let's try bottom right, see what that looks like. So it should be down here, I guess. Awesome. So now you can see that everything is literally at the top. I mean, the bottom right, right? Pretty cool. So if we expand this, it stays at the bottom right. So it's very, very um, flexible. Very, um, It's very smart in the way that it works, you know? Not a lot of configuration you have to do to get it to work. You know, just a couple, just one line of code, really. That's all you got to do. Awesome, right? And, of course, you can play around with the other different positions that come with this. You can do, um, let's see, I guess center, which is, that should be pretty cool. Let's try that out. There we go. So now everything's in the center. Okay, you get the point, though, right? We can uh, change the position and the alignment of each of these nodes for the HBox, right? So let me show you another one. Um, this one's going to be called padding. And you might be familiar with padding if you worked with CSS. And padding is basically just how much space you want around each of the child nodes, in this case, around the whole HBox, OK? So um, it wants a inset object. So we're going to create a new inset object. So new insets. And then it wants parameters here. So we have four different parameters that we can provide. And so the way this is going to work, it wants a amount of width. It's similar to the spacing. Um, method here it wants the um, the amount of space between um, the top the right the bottom and the left so I'll show you what that means in a second so let's just put some values in here so the 10 10 10 and 10 okay so this first one's gonna be top this one's gonna be right and this one's gonna be bottom and this one's gonna be left so it's clockwise top right bottom left okay so let me show you exactly what that looks like because of course it's better to always show you rather than tell you so yeah, it's not exactly going to be clear on how this works because of course we're using an alignment here so everything's already in the center. So let's get rid of this alignment for the time being so I can show you exactly what this is going to do. Okay. And we can see that there's a little space here on the left side. There's a little space here on the on the, on the the top side. There's a little space here for the spacing but there is actually there's a little space here that you can't actually see on the right side and there's a little space here that you can't actually see on the bottom side. Okay. So if you were to change this well, actually, it wouldn't change anything, but you get the point. So that's kind of confusing, but the way this works is this is the top, so this would be the first value, so 10, I guess, pixels. I'll call it pixels. I don't know if it's pixels. I've said that a million times. But so we got 10 for the top one. Then the next one, the second parameter, is going to be the right one. It's going clockwise, right? So the bottom is going to be the third one, so 10 here and then 10 here. Actually, no, it wouldn't be here and here. It would be here and here because the padding represents the padding for not just one of the nodes. It represents the padding for the whole H box, which would be the whole all four of these nodes here, right? So top, right, bottom, left. That's exactly how it works, okay? So yeah, I hope that makes sense. The padding is just the space around all of the nodes for the H box, and you can specify, for example, if you want um, the left side to have a bigger padding for some reason, like 40, you could do that, and then the right side, or then the top could have a different padding from 40, you could have like 20. So let's try testing it out to see what it looks like. Okay, and so yeah, it's pretty clear. We can see that, oh, did I say this is the right? I mean, okay, so just to be clear, this is the top, this is the right, this is the bottom, this is the left, okay? So we can clearly see that the top is about 40 pixels because it's much larger than all of the other ones. And then the next one is gonna be 20 pixels. That's gonna be the, the right side. So we, can't ex so we can't exactly see that because of course the window is sized in a specific manner. So let's try getting rid of the sizes for the window so we can see how it actually should be sized. And there we go, that's actually perfect. We can see how big the padding is now. So this is 40 for the top, this is 20 for the right side, and this is 10 for the bottom, and then 10 for the left side. Pretty cool, right? So you can clearly see that now. So if we were to change the bottom, we could do that. So we could do um, 
Let's try 100 for that, and that's going to be a huge number. Let's try that. And there we go. So we get about 100 of whatever unit for the bottom, right? So that's one for, that's 40, that's 20, that's four, uh, 100, and that's 10, okay? So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I drove that point in for you. Um, so that's padding, okay? So if we were to get rid of this padding here, we can see that the window is going to go back to just fitting for the node, for the nodes. And there we go. So, you know, no spacing, right? So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, so we'll get more practice with that in the future, obviously, okay? So, okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is called the margin, which is very similar to the padding, except that it allows you to control the padding for individual nodes. So let's set some margin. So we'll do root dot set margin, set margin, oops, so dot set margin. And then for some reason, it's hard to get it to come up until you type it all of the way. So we can do set margin, then press tab, and then it gives us a warning here, which is, I don't understand what the warning is even saying, but just ignore it, okay? So we're gonna set the margin, and the first parameter it wants is the node that you wanna target, because of course you're setting the padding for a specific node within the HBox, so we need to provide the node that we wanna target, right? So let's do um, node B2, for example. So B2, and then now we can create an inset for that, which is gonna be basically the same thing we did for the padding. And so if we do control P, so we can see that we need to provide the four parameters that we did for the padding as well. So we'll do 10, 10, 10, 10, just to see how it works from the start. And we'll run this now. And we can see that this one's different from all the other ones, right? Because we targeted the second button within, these, uh, within the H box. So we got 10, 10, 10, and 10. So it's 10 between each of the nodes, okay? So it's kind of double here on the sides. You know, the spacing is double what it should be because there's already a 10 spacing, so it's gonna add another 10, right? So, um, yeah, that's how that works. So let's play, play around with this some more. So we're gonna target number four, I guess. So let's do root set margin. We're gonna do B4, new insets. And we're gonna do, let's try doing something crazy like um, 60, 40, 30, 60. Okay, let's see what that looks like. And uh, come on. And there we go. So it's a little crazy, but yeah, um, that's how that works. Okay, so you're simply going to provide the node that you want to target, and then you can set the padding for that node. And then the padding, of course, is going to be the space you set between each of the um, other nodes, I guess. And then and then the window, of course, right? So yeah, those are the different methods I want to show you that you can run upon the HBox and the VBox. Because the HBox and the VBox are basically the same thing, so the methods are the exact same. So yeah, that's it. Um, if you were to change this to VBox, let's try doing that. So we can change this to VBox, and nothing would stop working because, it's, like I said, it's the exact same thing. So let's try running this and let's see what happens. And as you can see here, the only difference between the H box and the V box is that the nodes are laid out uh, vertically instead of horizontally, okay? So yeah, I don't need to show you anything else in this episode because the V box is only vertical rather than horizontal. So that's the only difference I need to show you, okay? So yeah, those are the first two layout panes that I want to show you, the H box and the V box. And uh, yeah, they're pretty self-explanatory, but I showed you the methods behind them in case you want to do some further configuration for them. So if you have any questions about what I showed you today, you can ask in the comment section below. I'll be glad to help you. Or I'd rather you join our Discord server. We have a Discord server with, with about 300 people, so you can join there. Be our friend, ask questions, whatever you want to do, just join that. And then all the code for today's episode is going to be in the description below, so make sure you check out the code and then bookmark it for future use, okay? And then finally, if you want to support this channel, you can join as a member by clicking the join button under this video. And then you can donate to this channel if you want to, okay? And that's it. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.